Hey everyone, it's Andy. I feel that it's really important that we retain some sense of normalcy while we're going through this crisis with the coronavirus. And so today and Wednesday, I am releasing a normal interview like I normally would. I'm very excited about it. But I just wanted to get on and, and say that, that I think that that's really important. So in a few minutes, you're going to hear the normal introduction for the show. If you missed last week, I do want to say that it was all about dealing with the impact of the coronavirus. Last Monday, it was a, just an amazing, really moving interview with Brett Culp, filmmaker and keynote speaker who had been on the wedding biz before. And Brett and I had a really in-depth conversation about how to deal as effectively as possible with what we are all going through today. I've been getting just an enormous amount of comments about it. I suggest you do listen to it. I think it'll give you some sense of peace and even inspiration. So that was last Monday. And then on Wednesday, in lieu of the next level, I released a conversation with David Beam, wonderful designer out of New York City. David had also been on the show um, some years ago and is very popular, very popular designer, especially among the industry. And so David and I talked about his particularly personal response to how he's dealing with this crisis in a way that can really help all of us. So I also recommend you listen to Wednesday's episode. And then last Friday, I had a bonus episode with Katie Kremitzos, who has the Women's Meditation Network, talking about meditation and the benefits of it, whether you are already doing meditation and want to take it further, or perhaps you haven't and you've thought about it. I think now is a great time to dedicate some time to learn about meditation. So I also recommend that you listen to Katie's episode last Friday. I also am going to continue to bring you special episodes about dealing with the impact of the coronavirus on our businesses. I really want to be a source of comfort and literally bring you resources to help deal with this. We're going to be hearing from David Stark on how he's dealing with his business with this issue. Also, Preston Bailey and several others. I'm going to basically mix it up. I'll have some special bonus episodes and I'll also sometimes substitute for the regular interview. And at times I'm going to continue the regular interviews. Again, I think we all really need that. And so now here is the regular introduction for The Wedding Biz. Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, in which I conduct in-depth and revealing interviews of icons of the weddings and event industry, all to provide you with education and inspiration. So this week, I'm excited to announce my guests are Matthew Robbins and Luis Otoya. Together, they own Robbins Otoya, a design and event planning firm. Also, Matthew has a company he founded, Matthew Robbins Design, based in New York City. And Matthew was on the show a couple of years ago. Great interview. Luis has a catering company called Evento y Cocina. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, based in Cartagena. Most of their business are destination events. They talk in great detail about their process, including the creative aspect. We really dig deep into that. Also have an interesting conversation about the use of color, as well as a discussion about their pricing philosophy, and of course, so much more. So enjoy my conversation with Matthew Robbins and Luis Otoya. Hey, Matthew and Luis, it is so good to sit down with both of you at the same time together. This is really Thank exciting. Thank you. It's nice so, to, yeah, it's good we so have this fun. chance to finally come to the table together. <laughs> well, yeah. And Matthew, I mean, it's been something like two years, we figured, since the interview of you. Yeah, crazy. Like, it, I don't know how, but yes. <laughs> I've been watching all that you've been up to since. Oh, have time. you been yep. keeping up? And I, and, and I encourage everyone listening to go back and listen to that interview of Matthew. It was really great. Thank you. Um, yeah. And so, so, Matthew, we know a lot about your backstory. Um, Luis, I would love to know, what is it that, that inspired you to get into the business? And, and like, how old were you when, when, when it hit you? Um, so, I actually came into the business through um, culinary arts. Yeah, that's my original background. I actually I went to school to study business. Where did you go to school? In Colombia, where I'm from. So yeah. in Bogota, um, I studied business, and then after finishing, um, I really wanted something. You know, my my passion was really in service, so mm -hmm. I really wanted to do you know something um, something different, something special, and. I was always inspired by my grandmother's kitchen. You know, she she was always, you know, in the kitchen cooking. 
and actually did it professionally for many, many years. So I, you know, I always saw that. Huh? That in the restaurant the, or? Um, actually, no. She did catering. She also uh, worked for Cartagena's, you know, biggest social club in of her time yeah. and um, and managed weddings. So she was kind of like a wedding planner of the time <laughs> Interesting. It, without that title. Right. It, you know. Yeah, because this is before it really was a thing. Exactly. Right? Before yeah. it was even a thing, she, you know, she uh, performed that activity, even though, again, it didn't have the title of a wedding yeah. planner. Um, so it was just really fascinating. And then I just, you know, went for it, uh, went for culinary arts, um, opened a restaurant, hated it, <laughs> but started catering and doing events, which was something that, you know, I felt really passionate about. So um, I opened up a catering company. It's been over 10 years now. It actually became a, a big deal in my hometown of Cartagena, Colombia, where the company still operates 365 days in the year. Wow. So I have a really great team in place down there. Fantastic chef right now. Um, and actually, it's it's become a little bit more of a family business. My brother's also part of the crew now. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, my clients, you know, maybe when when the company was up and running for about two and a half or three years, I would say to actually clients started demanding more services and like what, what do you mean? Well, they just didn't want only for our company, you know, Eventi Cocina, which is my catering company to take care of the catering side, but they also wanted, you know, my input on the planning and, you know, like the aesthetics of the event. And the beginning I was a little bit hesitant because, you know, it was not my thing, yeah. but, but then I said, you know what, I'm just going to give it a shot. And I opened a, uh, planning department in in within the company so you were just kind of winging it in a sense well you know i just i just went for it i knew that i i knew that i could do it i knew that yeah. you know like that i had the um structure and yeah. um the creativity i'm a very creative person so i just you know they, the clients really just wanted my seal my stamp of approval on every aspect of the of the event rather than just you know the food and beverage so i just went for it and started doing and it was extremely successful so yeah so I, I opened i started planning and then can i go back for a moment yeah, of though course. so when you started your catering company and it became successful really quickly yeah why do you think that was i always had a very different approach to what the other catering companies were doing um in colombia which was what my approach was came always from a very creative perspective you know like it was yes it was catering but it was there was al always a creative element to it so um it was not only how you know the food tasting deliciously but also plates being like really creative the presentation the presentation was like you know spot on and it had just a special element that people identified very quickly and wow. they just you know went for so uh -huh. um so yeah, I guess that that's also why my clients started, you know, demanding additional stuff from us. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. And so, okay, so then you open a planning company mm -hmm. in Cartagena. Mm -hmm. Now, is this while you and Matthew are together or beforehand? No. So th this was just the planning division within my catering company. Okay. Um, which was actually a great thing for the company, but it was also a little bit of a struggle locally because all the wedding planners that used to hire services from my catering company felt a little bit like, whoa, like this guy is now planning. So, oh, you know, so he's now they're not going to recommend exactly, you and all of exactly. that. Exactly. Which was fine. You know, I was willing to take that risk and it was, it was great. So actually when I met Matthew, it basically, uh, I was already wedding planning full on. And that's kind of, you know, when that happened, he was invited to, as a speaker to a uh, wedding conference in Cartagena, Colombia, okay. called uh, Cartagena Bridal Week, which was a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic conference. Mm -hmm. And I was also invited as a speaker. He was invited, you know, obviously, to work on, you know, design and planning. And then I was on a panel also that had to do with planning and catering. So it was just kind of... What, what a great way to meet. Yeah, it was, at, it was cool. And at this point, you had had your company for how long? At that point, I had my company for around six years. Okay, so you yeah. were into the planning. And mm -hmm. Matthew, where were you in terms of the trajectory of your career? How many years had you had your company and how far along? At that point, the business, my own business was I would, uh, 13 years. Yeah. Oh, 13 years? Yeah. Okay, so you were already, because I remember from the previous interview, you were well established by that point too. Yeah, exactly. At that point in my own business, I had already made the leap into doing planning plus design. So, but only for a few years, like, because my business, as you probably remember in the beginning was all about design yes. and then it evolved into planning and design, which yeah. has happened for many of our colleagues. Um, but 
yeah, I made that leap and it was a good leap. <laughs> well, but I'm thinking also in that moment, talk about a long distance relationship. <laughs> I mean, cause right. Lu- Luis, you were just in Cartagena, right? I, at the moment I lived in Cartagena. Um, Cartagena. And Man- yeah, Cartagena. Cartagena. I want to say that correctly. That's fine. Right. A lot of people pronounce it Cartagena. <laughs> yeah, I don't know Cartagena. why. I know me too. I don't know it's why. A, yeah, right. With yeah. the squiggly thing over the. But anyway. But yeah, but I was uh, full time in Cartagena at the moment, and Matthew was, you know, in New York. In New York yeah. We were both traveling internationally a lot for yeah. work. Mm-hmm. At yeah. that point, I was actually working for for the Colombian government, producing events internationally. You know, I was the embassy in, and, for yep. the embassies of Colombia, like in different mm-hmm. areas, just showing a lot of the Colombian gastronomy and oh, you know, like that kind of stuff. So it was, it was really cool. So it was actually a long distance relationship, but not so much because we kind of met everywhere in the world. <laughs> that is convenient. Yeah. 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 Find ways to connect. Yeah. Uh, it's so glamorous too, right. doing it that way. <laughs> sounds like it, sounds right? like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was not easy. But yeah, sounds yeah. like it. Yeah, but but here's the thing. So it's interesting to me. You both have similar companies. Was there there was no sense of competition, or was there a little bit between the two of you? I don't think. On it, to be totally honest, I yeah. don't think we ever felt that. It was more about you know, obviously, being a couple in life, separate from business. The struggle for anyone, I think. But our maybe our our journey was about finding roles that we both felt really comfortable in that were very also still respectful of each other's histories yeah. and allow each other like because Luis obviously had a he had a career coming into it and he had tons of press already in yeah. South America and all over. Um, so you know it's like he already brought a lot of um, amazing stuff to the table, but then to d- suddenly appear in New York with my business where I had all the attention and I had the history. Yes. That's not easy because you're, you're, you're very imbalanced and people in New York, obviously they're like, Oh, you know, Luis, he just, he moved here from Cartagena. Like he, he must not know anything about the industry because oh, he's not a quote yeah. New Yorker, which yeah. is New Yorkers tend to be that way, as you know. So that was an interesting journey, but I think I, I was told Luis, I think it's okay to share this yeah. is personal, very personal. But, you know, I said, I don't want to brag about you to my colleagues. Like, I don't want to say things to them and, and put you out there that way, because I think it's more important for you to prove to them all uh, how amazing you are on your own. Right. Because if I just say like, he's awesome because I love spending my life with him and he's an incredible guy. Sure. Some of my friends will, but until he has that opportunity to own the space, which he did and they did really well, then it was like, ah, uh, the our colleagues were like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. <laughs> like he's incredibly talented. He's incredibly driven. And I think that was really key. And that's probably important for any relationship where if you decide to work together in, in a business, like allowing each other to kind of own your space and prove yourself yeah. on your own. Yeah. Well, and if I key. recall from the interview with you two years ago, you were, um, I mean, you're both clearly creative, but you, I believe you had some issues with the business side of it, right? With the mm-hmm. numbers side of it. And, yeah. And like I never that. loved that part of it. Yeah. Here I, mean, I am. And Luis is very <laughs> you much love a part it. of it. Here I am. He does. And that's a nice balance. Yeah. I never, ever started this business or went into the industry because I'm a bus- I'm not a business person. I yeah. didn't go to school. I went to school for fine art and painting and drawing and art history. And my way of looking at the world is not a business perspective. So I've had to become a business person along the way by default, which has been a great education over the years. And now I can bring a lot to the table in it in terms of advice and experience. But I learned the hard way. And Luis came at it from someone who went to business school. So it's a, it's a cool blend. So is it in terms of the collaboration? I mean, before we get to the point where you also formed a company together, mm-hmm. yep. you know, Robin's Otoya, Robin's Otoya. Yep. Yeah. 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 before you did that, so, Luis, you would just kind of help out Matthew as far as the business aspects? Just- so, I took a little bit of time to kind of learn about the business in New York, specifically mm-hmm. in the New York market. Pretty you know, different like, from Pretty Cartagena. different, being kind of like an insider, outsider kind of uh-huh. thing, which was great. Um, also, just, again observing a lot and learning and, and and seeing it from different perspective from a different perspective and also finding uh ways of being creative um you know bringing different ways of doing things yep. to creative to the, in the business it, aspect well um yeah in the and business both, side of things, really like, in the yeah. business side of things but yeah. i would say both um but but yeah just you know finding creative ways of 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 doing things uh-huh. in a way that um, that were just, you know, different, uh, a little bit out of the box. And I think that that was 
you know, was a great thing for, so for the company. So applying that to Matthew's Correct. business, you're saying. Correct. Mm-hmm. So how, how did it come about that you both decided that you're going to have your two separate companies and now you're going to create another company that's, I guess, 50-50? How did that come about? You add your piece, but from my side, it was really, we wanted to develop something that was ours as a team, because I think that's important. Like yeah. it wasn't just Matthew Robbins design. It wasn't, you know, just Luisa's business that is catering, but it was like a thing that we put energy into to make our own. And I think it also carved out the space to head in a direction where we want to go, which is really making it all about the two of us and not just one of us. And I think that that takes time. Clearly, um, you know, you, you build a bit of a legacy for yourself in this industry, which, you know, I'm proud of. And um, I've been part of a wonderful history in the event world here. And I love that and I own it. But I think, you know, everyone has to evolve. And I think when you allow your partner into your world and your partner's willing to come into your world and bring you into their world, you have to also find ways of sharing that space to make it Although healthy. not everyone forms a company. <laughs> they, no, <laughs> it's, together. it's true. I think it was a good thing. And also we wanted a space that would maybe allow us to define the destination planning business a bit more. And so we've, we're, we've been working hard to kind of push the destination planning side of the company purely into Robbins Otoya and let that piece be because no matter what, makes sense. yeah, okay. Matthew Robbins design has been around for 18 years and it has a really big history of design. And no matter what I do, that will always be connected to my name. So I think it's important to kind of give it some weight um, for the destination planning side, which is pretty much what we do. Yeah. <laughs> and that is 90% of our business um, destination events. So, so what would you say is the signature, the brand signature of the company together, you know, as opposed to individually? Mm-hmm. And did you have to really work at it, discuss it, define it, or did it just come about? Like, first, what, what, how would you describe it if someone didn't know? I mean, I would say that Robin Sotoya does all the, we operate as Robin Sotoya for all our international jobs. For all the destinations? For all the destinations. Okay, right. I mean, technically, the mother company is Matthew Robbins Design, but Robin Sotoya is defined as the destination portion mm-hmm. of the company. I see. Um, the international destinations, because we also do domestic as yeah. Matthew Robbins Design. And, you know, the difference between Matthew Robbins Design and Robin Sotoya in terms of execution mm-hmm. is that Matthew Robbins Design has its own design, in-house design team that normally, you know, will always execute the job in the in yeah. continental USA. But when we're traveling, you know, when we're working abroad, mm-hmm. the model is a little bit different because, you know, for our clients, it, it sometimes doesn't really make sense to bring a whole design team from New York. Okay. It might make sense to, you know, it makes sense to, to still, you know, like own the design piece because the design will always come from our company and mm-hmm. Matthew as the art director. Um, but, we team up with local talent that can actually produce that design for us. So it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit different. That's something, you know, like a Matthew Robbins design job in the U.S. will never, you know, do that. Just because, again, we have our our own in-house and and it's just like such a strong, strong piece with the destinations. You know, we are a little bit more creative. Well, and you're dealing with a completely different cultural perspective Mm -hmm. too, right? Correct. And it's something that we also always want to keep in mind, the cultural aspect of it. For us, it's really important and it's really important also to include the local talent and make sure that we're actually producing Mm -hmm. a real destination. Uh, It's not about producing a New York wedding at a destination. It's mm -hmm. about really infusing it with authentic Mm -hmm. uh, things Mm -hmm. from the location with New York City standards. That's how we see it. That's very, yeah, I think when we sell our destination business to our clients, like a big piece, a big selling point is that we are, like we partner and we're looking to create something that is authentic to the place. Whereas there is definitely an approach that works for some people that is about creating a very, let's say, New York City wedding in Provence. Like we don't want to do that. We want to have a Provence wedding in Provence that is Provence With New York City standards. Again, like you you want to make sure that you're providing... You want some elements of it, right? Well, yeah, but you want to make sure that you're providing, you know, like the best, you know, like the best of the best. But but it it should be in, you know, if people are traveling to Provence, they want a Provence experience. You know, if not, they would stay at the plaza here in New York. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious also about your process, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and plus you're married. I mean, that it just seems like there's so many things I want to ask. First of all, how do you spend so much time together? (laughs) How are you having your personal life and your business? Because there are people out there that 
are trying it, having trouble with it, or think about doing it, mm-hmm. that's a whole nother. It's interesting. I guess we really like each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, it's funny. One colleague that I really relate to. So when it comes to this stuff, we were t- on a recent trip. We had time to spend with Lynn Easton and her, and her husband. Yes, and that was really right. cool because as couples, we the four of us were chatting, and Lynn was like, "We just don't have much. There's not much of a line sort of between what is." work life and what is our life life as a couple because we love what we do we Mm -hmm. love our time together we love each other as creative partners like we feed off of that energy and and it was cool to hear that because we feel the same and it was something um that we don't get to verbalize often but we love what we do but we love doing it together we love the energy exchange we love the well, and the, there's the not only the business, but the creative act, yeah. the creative aspect of it, right? Which has exactly. got to be incredibly energi- energizing. And we challenge each other, you know, like we push each other, which is cool. Like how so? What do you mean? Every way, creatively, business on business levels, like, you know, and of course we argue like anyone, couple or not, but the arguments are usually, I would say 90% of the time are creative arguments because they're about sort of restructuring something or looking at something from a different angle or how can we make this better or how can we make this different um or sometimes we're our best and worst critic (laughs) yeah and maybe that you know like that's when that's a good you know that but but that just makes you better every time you know like Mm. i'm very you know as i mentioned from the beginning i'm a very creative person i bring really great and strong ideas to the table like i'm very great with sp- i'm great with space i'm great with color yeah. you know like that kind of stuff but hey the artist here is matthew and i'm very clear on that huh. you know so so i'll give my you know my very honest feedback and opinion as to what you know like i think in terms of design but he's got the final word and you know like and that that's totally cool with it but you know but i'll fight for what i'm yeah for for what i believe and sometimes i i might win you know (laughs) that kind of things or or maybe from the business side of things like you know again matthews as he mentioned he Mm -hmm. he didn't go to business school but it's been you know 18 years plus in Mm -hmm. business now and and sometimes he'll say like you know, I understand your point, Luis, but like, maybe we should look at this and that. And, you know, I might not agree. And then we, you know, we find... But do you have the final word on the business aspect uh, of it? Well, you know... Probably more, yes, more probably often than not. I would say that... I defer often, to yeah, you for correct. that. Yeah. Correct. Like, I, mean, I always go to Luis for that final decision on things related to business. Yeah, for sure. Because it gives me security as well in knowing that it's not just from a creative perspective, it's from a, a more business mind. You know, I'm also thinking about the amount of trust that you all must have because of this relationship. That's another yeah. aspect of it's it. It's true. It's a lot of trust. It's true. You have to, you know, trust that you both carry the same weight in terms of managing your reputation and your, you know, your image and your clients, um, putting a client in, in, in someone else's hands. That's a big deal. So, Yeah. So, so what is the process like then for the two of you? And is it mostly when I, I read somewhere you do up to 12 weddings a year, you like to keep it limited yeah. to executing we usually one do a weekend? 12, 14 max for weddings. I would say that's mm-hmm. like for Other us. Other parties max. too, or just weddings? No. So in addition to that, we'll do like birthday celebrations or, uh, you know, ever occasionally a corporate or nonprofit thing, but most of our work is all social. So it's like an amazing 50th birthday party in um, the south of France or a super cool anniversary somewhere um, a jazz at Lincoln Center with amazing performers. Uh, so it, if it's not a wedding, it's generally a personal kind of life celebration. It is. And, and how does the process go? I mean, for the company you own together, what is the process? It's very similar to the process that we have in place for Matthew Robbins design, but it's, you know, um, for destination, it's about defining, you know, obviously getting to know the client, but then defining, sometimes people come to us and literally say, like, I'm looking at Utah and I'm looking at Japan and I'm looking at Italy and I'm looking at, you know, it's like the list is so insane. You're like, how do, so it's about working together as a team to edit down and get to the sort of core of and maybe find that little secret spot of like what the client is really about and we do that well like getting to know them becoming they're really becoming sort of like friends with the client of course, also sometimes they actually do know where they think they want to get married right. and we end up in a different location for multiple reasons yeah. so mm. you know it's kind of like guiding them through that process but that that would be kind of you know the first step in terms of, um, sort of defining defining the, the des- you know the destination would be for us number one and mm-hmm. then obviously 
learning a little bit about their numbers, you know, mm -hmm. where where they want to live. Mm -hmm. If there's, you know, some clients come in with no budget and others have to be, you know, mm -hmm. within certain define numbers. It, so yeah. that will define also a lot of, you know, moves uh -huh. um, in terms of, you know, better or, you know, better locations for, for the couple. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say creatively, we, our approach tends to be about finding a destination that defines the vision. So rather than finding a place that you kind of have to like turn it into something that it's not like, so we like to sort of direct the clients to a place that embodies sort of the essence of what they're looking to say aesthetically. Vision wise again, yeah, first, exactly. Before discussion exactly. of where, like, yeah. I think aesthetically, whatever you choose, like it, the aesthetic, like we always say, like design and planning, they walk, they have to walk hand in hand. So from the minute you step foot on a property, like we keep the design, sort of the aesthetic portion right there present with the logistics. Because without it, you end up with maybe something that works logistically, but then you're like, oh God, I hate the vibe of this. And how are we going to give it the vibe that I really wanted? Whereas if you start out keeping those things sort of as equal partners, it it, Can you better, perhaps bring up a story as to use as an example to illustrate this? That would be great. Yeah. yeah. As much from scratch as you can possibly think of with the couple. Well, I can even think about the one we have in Italy on the coast. Okay. Um, well, that's like that journey with the client was interesting. Oh, yeah. We, they, they came in. They, 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 had basically, list, yeah. they had, basically had a big a list of like 35 places in the world <laughs> wow. that they think are amazing. Okay. And, that, and, and this particular client... I don't want to say didn't have any restrictions, but we were not limited in terms of like the location that they could choose. So, yeah, you know, right. that's a great thing to, you know, to start out with. Yeah. But it was like 35 locations of like fabulous hotels and yeah. places in the world. And it's like, how do you guide them to narrow it down to, you know, two or three? So as Matthew mentioned, it's like a process of really learning about your client and like what they really like and what they gravitate towards as a couple. Mm -hmm. Sometimes one of them likes something and the other one doesn't. So yeah. it's like, how do you also maintain that balance and give them both what they're both looking for? So, you know, right. after, you know, an extensive, extensive research on our side and, you know, like finding the pros and cons on absolutely every location and kind of, figuring it out a little bit for them, we, we came with a shorter list of places to go visit. Okay. So we had to do um, a site well, can visit. Can I ask for a moment? Yeah. What, what was the, at that point, the vision or the aesthetic that led you to narrow it down? Well, they wanted to have contact with the ocean somehow. So okay. that, you know, some properties were amazing, but, yeah. you know, they were not near to the ocean yeah. mm -hmm. so you know like that crossed out some some were more like it was actually not an ocean it was water so also lakes mm -hmm. you know lake como mm -hmm. and you know mm -hmm. uh lago de garda were still options on the mm -hmm. table but um so that crossed out some and then also their a big thing was their personal aesthetic uh, because correct. one of them happens to be a designer and like they have a very specific vision what kind of designer interior okay. um, yeah. and really beautiful and really chic and like I, I and i connected with that right away and i was like this is going to be really challenging because we need to find something that that she approves of obviously mm -hmm. aesthetically which isn't easy when you're so specific about design so a lot of the editing down we used her sort of general our knowledge of her aesthetic as a way to kind of like get to that but the interesting thing was the things that we thought that they might really love for their wedding they ended up loving them yes mm -hmm. as places and they approved of the aesthetic across the board but at the end of the day the place they chose was more driven by an aesthetic and a spirit that they wanted to cultivate for the wedding that would work for their group and less about what would just work for them as a couple. So I thought it was cool that we could get them to that place. Like this place might not represent our personal aesthetic in life, but it represents an aesthetic and a vibe that we want for our wedding. And that's how we want to celebrate. So nice. that was really interesting because they learned a lot about themselves, I think, along the way. Yeah, it took, yeah. you know, we had to go on a site visit, you know, yeah. see, I think we saw like, so Quite multiple places, yeah, yeah. multiple places from that list in our, and in multiple countries too. Yeah. You know, it was Jeez. like, you know, a trip of several days, just like, yep. you know, I think we narrowed down to between Italy and France. Okay. And, and so, but it was multiple locations in France and multiple locations yeah. in Italy. Yeah. And, you know, until we narrowed it down and then, you know, we went from there. So how did you or they or together come to one place then? It was really about, it was a hard decision for them because, you know, they're both 
wonderful and very um, intuitive and they pay attention to things, which I love. So I, I love that about them as clients. So I knew it would be hard. And it was really, they, they narrowed it down to two and they just like couldn't make a decision. So uh-huh. finally, it, you know, I said to them, when you close your eyes and you think about your wedding weekend, what do you see? Like, how do you see the, how do you see guests enjoying the property? How do you, what are you doing during that weekend? Like, what do you want to be doing? And every time they would circle back to the spirit of the place that they went with, which was again, aesthetically, maybe not their personal vibe, but it just made sense in terms of the spirit of the weekend. Meaning it was all about, you know, enjoying the sea and jumping in the ocean and having a cabana and like eating amazing food and like the property works in such a way that you kind of see each other, but you also have privacy. So Mm. it gave them, it get kind of ticked all the boxes and it wasn't so much driven, you know, it wasn't all driven by the aesthetic. Although they, they chose a very, very amazing place. place. (laughs) What what is the place? The place they chose is um, hotel Il Pelicano, which is like a classic, classic um, location. And, and it is incredibly chic. It's a diff- It's just slightly, maybe more whimsical and um, spirited in a way that is like maybe more sort of iconic and vintage. But well, we're very excited to be working at this um, location. Yeah. Um, the Il Pelicano Hotel has this is going to be, I think, the second or third wedding in fifty years. Wow, um, that's pretty cool. They didn't do many. operation. They don't do a lot of weddings. Uh-huh. They have a very strong clientele, you know, for vacationing. Yeah, that's um, their and main they, business. That's yeah. their main business. Mm-hmm. And so normally they don't really have dates available for weddings because oh. they have like families that return every single twenty year years for twenty <laughs> yeah. years. So yeah. they can't say no. Yeah. To, you know. Yeah. To people that have their room booked every year after year so yeah. so it's really cool I that can, you know that we, i think of also a recent wedding we did in ireland where the client came to us thinking they wanted scotland but then the more we talked to them and got to know them it was clear that like a different type of property would work for them so we introduced them to ballyfin in ireland and they it again it would fit the bill perfectly it was mm-hmm. like exactly the experience and it was a fabulous one I and mean, yeah, it was so, it was so gorgeous. beautiful yeah, so um beautiful. and really special you know i'd like to also ask uh, just a couple take a couple elements of design i noticed that uh louis you mentioned color you yeah. know it, it's something and matthew i know i don't know if i read it somewhere or heard you speak that color is really something special for you can you all talk about your thoughts on color you know how you view color yeah. and I think I posted something recently about it. That's for, what it was. Yeah. It was a, a yeah, it was an Instagram it's very post much, or something. It's very embedded in my history as a painter and, and someone who studied art. But for me, like I always tell clients also when we're working on design, like if we can ignore this sort of obsession with coming up with a quote theme or like a, you know, a design theme, let's focus on the basics, which really starts with color because color defines pretty much everything. Color, you know, color defines um, shapes, it defines textures, it defines mood, it defines... um, Wait, as a layman, what do you mean by defines shape and structure? Because, you know, like depending on the palette you choose, it could, it can easily go uber modern or it can go very romantic and very earthy and like so if, if a palette is earthy and soft it immediately starts conjuring up all the hard goods that are that fit the that aesthetic so it's it, you sort of create a language for yourself a vocabulary and then you start sort of like piecing in the things that build out that picture um and that vocabulary becomes a story in it so it, it's interesting i think color form like all those things they they really define the the decisions for things. And it's hard to get people who don't think that way t- to meet you there. But once they do, it, it makes more sense. And they sort of, they let go of this idea of like, Oh, I'm having a, a coastal bohemian, blah, blah, blah wedding. It's and like, you see colors when you hear that. Exactly. Yeah. I do. I see colors. I see shapes. Like I don't really, for me, it's not about like finding something that is technically bohemian. Or, yeah. And for my, for me, even yeah. though I don't have the art background, yeah. okay. um, but it comes, for but some it reason, comes it comes naturally, naturally yeah. to myself. So also when a client is describing their wedding, you know, I start seeing, You're you know, seeing colors, colors as well. Yeah. So it's like, and most of the times those colors tend to be aligned for the two of us. Interesting. And also, um, I don't know, it, it's just, I feel that uh, both of us, you know, we don't really, we're not afraid of using color. Mm-hmm. I feel that a lot of people out there, you know, like go on the safe side of like, oh, let's just do green and whites, you know, like, which is really beautiful and timeless and, 
And we also do, you know, in a great and chic way, but mm -hmm. we are always open to introducing, you know, like color and working with just the right tones and making it really chic, mm. uh, you know, but happy. I mean, happy, I think it's important for mm -hmm. us. Yeah, I guess the nature yeah, of the event. It's wacky. I mean, like I can think of one bride last year who literally said to us, uh, <laughs> her inspiration was, I hope I get this right, but it was Alice in Wonderland. Uh, what was the Willy other? Wonka? No, it was Alice. Midnight. Oh yeah, Midnight Summer's Dream, Alice in Wonderland and Willy Wonka. Like, what do you do with wow. that? <laughs> yeah. okay. and, and every color. So it was like, yeah, okay. Um, so from there, it was kind of like, oh, wow. Like, how do I drill this down to, or like sort of like edit it down to something that makes sense? And the final result was really cool. And it was a good challenge. And I felt so happy about it. But again, it was about knowing how to balance things. And the color played probably one of the biggest roles in that, in that wedding and the aesthetic had probably every color in the color wheel, but it was all balanced so beautifully that you didn't see it that way. You saw it as this complete story rather than just like a rainbow mm. crazy. Well, you, you can know, do rainbow, but you can do rainbow chic. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You, <laughs> can. That I've never, you may have just invented a <laughs> <Right>. phrase. <laughs> rainbow chic. <Right. laughs> That's yeah, fantastic. like I think it's not, it's not enough just to have a lot of color. You have to know how to use the color. And that I think that's a big, a big thing. And that's, and I think that's what, we love about our collaborations and we love about our work and circling back to kind of like, I think what probably keeps us going in terms of inspiration is that, you know, just to plan an event is not enough inspiration for us, but like to plan it and design it at the same time is really cool and exciting because there's that dynamic and that relationship. And that's what I think we bring to the table for our clients. You know what you're making me think of right now? So, you know, I come from the music side with the exactly. Christian entertainment and I, and I'm thinking of, it's all about collaboration, the group, the artistic, you know, integration of yep. not only just different instruments, but it's the personalities and it's the artistic so bent that each person has. And it's, it's like a chemical equation, right? You right. Put, put it together That's and so it, true. It's, it's bigger and explosive. You know, what about also when you both are talking about color, I'm thinking about, well, but light. What mm -hmm. about the the how light plays into this? Well, I mean that's a that's a big big portion. Yep. Um, we normally don't use color in light. You know, we we are more of highlighting the color that we're already bringing. You know, to the yeah. to the equation rather than adding color through light. Yeah, the lighting people uh, who know us know like <laughs> they know us well, but then the ones who don't are always like slightly horrified because we don't like they're like you're not letting me do my thing. Like I want to, you know, but we respect like that they have amazing equipment and they can do lots of things, but our events tend to not be about like dramatic crazy moving lights and different colors. At least yeah. until until 2 a.m. Yeah, 2 a.m. <laughs> when it and can, then, right. then it can go crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just feel like the story, we have to tell a story that is about all of these, to your point, like you were saying, all of these personalities, all of these details coming together to create this exquisite story that is not overwhelmed by a bunch of flashy stuff. That's yeah. just, like, yeah. The way we find that for us, like the clients who appreciate what we do are the ones who kind of walk into a space and absorb all of those details rather than like needing to be knocked out by you know but but the to spinning Matthew, lights. but to Matthew's <laughs> point just working together is really inspiring for us and yep. as a team we just offer our clients a stronger service that's you know that's yeah. how we see it yeah, we're I think that that's as a how team. they yeah. see it, it we're, we're better as a team um and and I think that that's that's been amazing for mm -hmm. for the two of us and for our mm. company. You know, one more topic before we go, before we close, is also sensitive one in the industry is pricing, mm. you know, and, yeah. and what your pricing strategy is, sure. whether or not you charge a design fee or whatever. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that, how you feel yeah. about that, how you handle it? Sure. We, like for our planning and design work, like we, we always charge a flat fee. And like, we've talked to lots of colleagues about this, like Lynn included and M Michelle, we have many debates oh, about these, it. This is a hot yeah. topic. Exactly. Yeah. It is yeah. that, but that fee is an, ed it's an educated, I mean, it's in a very informed decision. So we look at the whole picture in the same way that everyone does. We look at sort of how that fee relates to the overall picture in terms of what the scope of work, the overall budget, because budget obviously defines scope of work. So we look at all of those things. It's not like we're just like, oh yeah, our fee is this random number. Um, and for us, you know, the design piece is already built into that. So like our fee includes our design work, but then separate from that, like there's no 
there's nothing physical, meaning like you don't get flowers or linens or lighting or anything in our fee. That's all a separate proposal and a separate a separate budget and everything else. But yeah. And we consider, as Matthew mentions, the scope of work and, you know, budget and, you know, what has to be produced, what is it that the client is looking to achieve and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, at the end of the story, you know, the fees are similar to what a percentage might be. We just feel that it Working on a flat fee creates a relationship, a very solid relationship of trust with yes. the client. Yeah. We don't want the decisions in our company for our clients to be motivated by how much our company, how much revenue our company is making yeah. from each of those decisions. So, mm -hmm. you know, to give you an example, we don't want to push a client to do, you know, we won't, won't don't want to be ever in that place where we're pushing a client to do like a tent with fully AC blah, 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 because it's like, you know, a $300,000 plus 10 that, okay, we're making 20, you know, 18% off off. Yeah. So we just feel that it's a, a fair approach and yeah. that, and that we want to make sure that we're building that relationship of trust since the beginning. Our contract is very clear with regards to scope. And if there's a change of ask, scope, yeah, what if there's, if a, there's change? a change of scope, then that's something that we will need to sit with the client and, you know, like, and, and assess the situation based on whatever it is that they're adding. You know, yeah, like right. if we, if we committed to doing, you know, two events or three events in the weekend with these, people with these or, types yeah. of characteristics. Um, but this has drastically changed. Evidently, you know, there will be a conversation mm. followed where, you know, we have to charge for the additional services that we're, that we're providing. It's complicated. So, I mean, yeah. I know like that is probably the one thing that when we go on fams or, you know, think like that ends up being always a big topic over drinks with colleagues <laughs> because bet. it's just, it's really hard. And like, I think for all of us who are maybe at this lovely, very privileged top level in the industry, mm -hmm. all of us with different histories and different pricing and all that stuff, we all are very aware of the fact that we need to be respectful of each other and respectful. Of, and, and, and I say that because respectful and like you have to price things accordingly, like that are respectful of where you are in the business as well. Um, but clients are also very different these days. That's something I talk about with colleagues often, like they're more educated. They have access to a whole lot more than they did even 10 years ago. And they just come at it with a very different approach. And I think you have to meet them there and, bring that awareness to the process. Hmm. And finally, last question, how do you each view the word success? What does it mean to you? <laughs> hmm. That's interesting. That's an interesting question. This recently. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a inter very interesting one. Um, for me, it probably not surprising for you since we just talked about the fact that I am not a business person. It's not about money. Like I don't look at success as It's not a number. It's not how much money I have in my bank account or how much I'm making every year. It's more, it's a combo for me. It's what's my level of happiness? How much joy do I have in what I do? How have I risen above others in the industry with my hard work? Like what makes me special? Mm. Um, what have I been recognized for? How strong is my voice? Like all of those things are for me sort of what I look at as like the level of success. Yeah. And I mean, I much, very much agree with Matthew. Obviously, it depends on what kind of success you're talking about, because, you know, a successful business, if we're talking about a successful business, well, yeah. evidently you have a business because you want to, you know, make, make money, money well, from the yeah. business. It's so, a business. You know, it is. Um, but yes. maybe professional and personal success. Yeah. I would say I would agree with Matthew that, you know, happiness plays a very important role in it um you know it's how happy you are and yeah you know, how happy you feel with your work with your life with the quality of life that you have i think is also really important mm -hmm. um yeah and yeah you know if you have love if you have health if you have you know like all the really important the, the things that really matter i think that then you're a successful human I mean, it's sort of you know? hard like we giggle about it sometimes but yeah like i feel we're privileged. We, we spend our days, obviously it can be stressful many times and there's a lot of emotion involved for our clients, but at the end of the day, we're planning happy, amazing events for people in the most beautiful places and traveling with them, seeing things, getting inspired, building these beautiful visions. Like there's really nothing to complain about. I think, you know, the challenges are just, you know, all the things that come with managing expectations and, 
and uh, budgets and all of that. But at the end of the day, I think, yeah, it's a blessing to do what we do. We're, I think we're quite lucky to do what we do. Um, well, that's we, how pro- we, see we produce it. happy moments. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> you produce happy moments. We do. Moments. I mean, there's, that's sort of hard to, you know, not love. Um, and, and people put a lot of trust in us for that. So I think that maybe is the most stressful part is just knowing the weight you carry on your shoulders for these amazing clients who, this is a big deal. It's a big life moment. Mm. So, and if you don't pull it off, beautifully and flawlessly then that that is stressful <laughs> yeah, yeah because they're big big moments but it's a it's a lucky thing to do well thank you both very much this thank has been you. a total pleasure thanks thank such you. a pleasure thanks for, for us having us well. thank back. you for having us yeah. yeah absolutely thank you for listening to my conversation with matthew robbins and Luis otoya be sure to check out their website at robbinsotoya.com that's R-O-B-B-I-N-S-O-T-O-Y-A.com. Of course, it's in the show notes at theweddingbiz.com. Their social media handle with the company they own together is Robbins Otoya. And in the show notes, you'll also see the separate websites as well. Be sure to check them out again at theweddingbiz.com. And we would love it if you would share this with your friends and colleagues so people can find this wonderful interview with Matthew and Luis and also about the show. And don't forget to listen to our follow on segment, which comes out every Wednesday called The Next Level, in which I have a guest co-host. And together we tease out some of the highlights of the interview of the week and kind of break them down into some specific tactics and tips that you can use to raise your own business to the next level. And I'm very excited to say that this week's guest co-host is going to be Sean Lowe, a frequent contributor to the podcast. Sean is a consultant with the business of being creative. Also want to mention next week's episode, it's going to be Sophia Crocus, a planner designer out of New York City. Had a great conversation with her. And be sure to subscribe so you get notifications. It's free, of course. And follow us, especially on Instagram, at The Wedding Biz. Again, The Wedding Biz. And finally, our sponsor for today is Kushner Entertainment. If you want music and entertainment that is super high touch, custom curated, go to kushnerentertainment.com and we'll catch you next week on The Wedding Biz. <laughs>